you know, this was also a really interesting week because Pat, you and I, you had a great post on LinkedIn about all the flag planting by every CEO in the in the semiconductor space. Whereas there was like three or four that were actually really visible throughout the whole process, and then there were a hundred that were taking pictures on the front lawn of the White House. Um, I got to tell you, man. You know, I got twenty thousand views of that tweet. Uh, there were yeah. no graphics. There were no, and get get guess who the demographic who who looked at it the most? CEOs. <laughs> CEOs. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, we know we know you're, we know you're watching. We know you're. We know, we, we know who you are. We know who you are. But yeah, I mean, your 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 post was effectively just talking about the fact that there was a small subset of CEOs that took a big interest in the CHIPS Act, CHIPS and Science Act. And then there were a number that were signing on and kind of tagging along for the ride, but weren't wow. very active. Um, and again, there's different reasons and there's certainly a disproportionate amount of dollars that could be attributed to certain companies. Those that are planning to build fabs and manufacture chips here in the US got more money. Now there is another 200 mil billion that will be appropriated for various R&D and innovation yeah. that now maybe we'll hear everybody come out and talk about. but. That's a little bit less the news, but I just have I couldn't I couldn't resist tying this and in. By the way, the White House invites you. You're gonna go, but I had to bring it up. Why you know, did we get invited? I you know I don't know. I did like 50 television appearances talking about how this needed to be done, brother. I know in the six five summit, I would say at least three quarters of the folks uh, mentioned one way or another the Chips Act. So. I don't sorry. know. Maybe, uh, maybe it's my Twitter feed. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Daniel, if I blew your. I think you got me banned. I think you got yeah. me banned. I don't know. Maybe they did a security check on you, and they're like, nope. Yeah, they were like, guy. too much hair, too much hair. Yep. All right. Yep. So, um, but anyway, so like Global Foundries, Micron's another uh, big manufacturer. Obviously, in the memory space is is the focus for Micron, but uh, and we're going to talk quite a bit about Micron actually um, <laughs> for the next ten minutes. But the company announced now the plan to invest another $40 billion between now and 2030 to make chips in the U.S. Um, of course, this is going to be supported by the Chips and Science Act that got signed into law this week. Um, and in really good news, uh, Micron uh, has said, now this is a big part of why we did it, this is going to create up to upwards of 40,000 jobs, uh, including 5,000 highly paid technical and operational roles. Um, you know, this capacity would basically take the U.S. market share of memory chip production from 2% to 10%. Huge deal. Um, now, again, this is a sort of an early flag plant, uh, early into the post Chips and Science Act. I'm guessing that we're going to hear more of these kinds of announcements from, uh, you know, manufacturers, foundries, fabricators here in the U.S., but it was a big moment for the company. You know, we've talked, Pat, probably it feels like after last week, what do we do? The 232 NAND, the, the super yeah, 232 technical. layer NAND, yeah. This is less technical, but um, Micron's come up more and more. And, and the long and short of it is the critical nature of memory as compute and performance and, uh, you know, continues to be enhanced is that with memory has to come along for the ride. And Micron becomes a really awesome bellwether as to how the, monolithic and new packaging technologies are going to perform because you know the memory has to come along for the ride. All these new technologies, all these new uh, processes are going to require more memory. So um, effectively, we've now had Global Foundries make the announcement. We've had Intel make their 100 billion announcement and now Micron stepping up and making a 40 billion announcement. Now, just for reference, China has 40 projects right now, if I understand it correctly, building more manufacturing capacity. Taiwan has 20 projects. So we're still early days here. We might have put up 52 billion and we may have heard uh, from Micron Global Foundries and Intel all expanding capacity, but we still got a lot of work left to do. But it, it's good for Micron to continue investing here. It's been a company that's been investing here, wanting to invest more in here, uh, more here in the US, Pat. And it was just something worth calling out this week. I mean, China invested, Chinese government invested $200 billion to build semiconductor plants. And what do we do here in the U.S. is we, we put that $200 billion into woke, uh, woke programs who don't actually move industry or science or national security uh, forward. So, yeah, I mean, you know, we can do, I do the golf clap on that $50 billion, but, um, you know, c compared to what China 
is investing, it's 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 not a whole lot. And Daniel, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit on I think just the strategic nature of uh, of memory and storage. So for for years, the you know 40, 50 years, it, it was really processors that that were on top of the food chain that dictated um, the architecture, let's say, of a data center or the architecture of a PC or a smartphone. And, you know, you can, I could argue that, uh, you know, you can affiliate that or, or compare that. You, memory is so tightly coupled with compute that um, it's, it's as strategic. Now with uh, CXL, which is high speed uh, interface and the ability to have memory as a composable um, piece of the architecture, it completely is going to change the architecture of the data centers. All the big data center folks are going to have to re-architect it over uh, the next uh, over the next five years. So, you know, I can say with confidence that uh, in the data center, uh, memory is an, has equal footing with uh, with processing and storage now. Hence. Uh, it's important, importance and the addition of this $40 billion uh, investment. 